it's uh, very hard to untwist the scriptures because the scriptures have been twisted by many false teachers to their own destruction. And we need to be sanctified in the Holy Spirit to do this work. We have to put on the whole armor of God against the wiles of the devil because we're dealing with the holy word of God. And when you get to Malachi, you see that there's a curse. And he's praying, turn the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And that curse is the way the English Bible ends in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Bible. And the curse is still there until it is taken. Curse is everyone who's hanged on a tree. And so those who, it says, cursed is everyone who does not uphold all of the words of this Torah to do it. So that curse is there and until it's taken away. And there's only one way that it can be taken away. And in every family, there are terrible curses. In my family, there was a grandfather who was a drunkard and a whoremonger. And that curse went down to the third and fourth generation. My brother died of alcoholism. And that curse was chasing after me like a like a greyhound dog that you couldn't outrun by the mercy of God, my mother, who suffered more than anyone under this man, this whoremonger, this alcoholic, who threw her mother out of the house when the mother was sick. So the little girl had to grow up without a mother, with an alcoholic father, nearly starving to death, in terrible violence and alcoholism in the home. And that curse, it says that the heart of the children has to be turned to their fathers, but also the heart of the fathers has to be turned to their children. And so this curse can go down to the third and fourth generation with family upheavals and a need for family reconciliation. And when you get to Malachi, you see this one word, Shemesh Tzedakah, and it has to do with the son, the son of of righteousness, the son of vindication, the son who reconciles. We think of the warmth of the sun, the healing virtue of the sun. We think of vitamin D and all of that. It says in Luke chapter 1, verse 78, the branch from the oyster shall visit us. Uh, and many, uh, many uh, translations twist uh, Isaiah 4 2, which it says, In that day, Hashem Tzavaos. Well, actually, it says, The 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 Tzema, the branch of Hashem, it's talking about the branch the branch of the offshoot, the offshoot, the offshoot of Hashem. Hallelujah. And so look at how the King James Version translates uh, Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. Actually, 
the word is the the offshoot, the the tzema, which when we when you think of an offshoot, you think of the sun, the son of Hashem. Hashem has a son. Proverbs thirty verse four. And uh, we we have to come back to this verse. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful. The branch of the Lord is the Messiah himself. This title is used in Jeremiah 23, 5, 33, 15, uh, Zechariah 3, 8, and 6, 12. And so Isaiah is revealing a glorious promise of this future hope of the Messiah. He He's seeing ahead. He's looking ahead. And he sees something glorious coming. The Bar Enosh, all peoples will serve. And they will serve him as nothing less by nature than God. He will be, Daniel 7, 14, Pelam and Het, nothing less than God. Because he does not come to the Atik Yomin having accomplished nothing. My word that I send forth will not return to me void. Isaiah 55, 11. Because it says, the Atik Yomin, or Hashem, possess his eternal word from the beginning, Proverbs 8.22. And uh, as such, he was the Beshefer agent of creation. Uh, Psalm 33, verse 6. And the Zun Pundar Oibishter, the son of the Most High, of the Oibishter, of Hashem, the sun, the offshoot, the Zemach, the Isaiah 4 2, and Proverbs 30, verse 4, son of the of the most high. Now, when you get to Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, Rashi tells you in his commentary that the Baranosh is the Messiah. So there's no question about that. But when we compare the word for serve used in both Daniel 3.12 and Daniel 7.13 and 14, it is clear that idols cannot be served in this way. So Mashiach is not an idol. Yet he will receive divine service as to nothing less than God. And that's why we see in the Brit Hadashah that the Bar Enosh can heal and the Bar Enosh can forgive sins and the Bar Enosh can rise from the dead because the Bar Enosh is God's personal word. And since that's true, this is important because only through God's word can we know God's salvation. Look at Psalm 119. I love that Psalm. I read it all the time in the prayer meeting. And especially verse 81. Which, uh, verse 81 says, My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. In other words, my hope for salvation is in the word of God. It's not in a feeling. It's not in myself. It's not in some teacher. It's not in a dead ribby over at Old Montefiore Cemetery laying in the, in the dust, moldering in the grave. And every Friday, today is Friday, the 27th of January, 2023, there are adherents of this dead rabbi, and they're grabbing people 
in Manhattan. And I saw someone being grabbed today in front of the Grand Central Station. And over here was a little tent where they were selling marijuana on the street. And over here were two policemen. And over here were these two false teachers grabbing this, this man uh, and introducing him to a false messiah. And you see, it's only through God's word. So if you're not reading God's word and studying God's word, how are you going to find salvation? Only through God's word can we know God's salvation. Psalm 119, 81. God's son, Proverbs 30, verse 4. If you think that God doesn't have a son, then argue with Proverbs 30, verse 4. Argue with Solomon. God's son, the source of revelation. And you get that in Proverbs 30, verses 3 to 5. He functioned as an amon, a craftsman, a master builder. Proverbs 8, verse 30. He functioned as creative wisdom, chokmah, at Hashem's side, the source of creativity. Proverbs 8.12, Proverbs 8.22, Proverbs 8.30, the source of love, Proverbs 8.17. And this Zemak, this offshoot, this son of Hashem, Isaiah 4.2, he took on an imperishable body, Proverb, uh, Psalm 16.10. His body was imperishable. Emmanuel born of Ha'alma with a, an imperishable body. Psalm 16, verse 10, would, which would not see Shahat. The son of God, Messiah. And you know, David's son, uh, Moshiach ben David, Psalm 2.7, 1 Chronicles 17.13, Isaiah 7.14, Isaiah 9, 5, and 6. But it was not just his son. David doesn't call his boy Adonai, Adoni, my Lord. How can he call his son his Lord? Because he knows that this genealogical offshoot, which will come through his genealogy, will be nothing less than the Lord God. Malachi 3.1, Psalm 110, verse 1, and Isaiah chapter, five, five, chapter 9, verses 5 and 6, El Gibor. Aviad, possessor of eternity. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Joel chapter 2, verse 32. So this saving name, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, the saving name, the name of the Lord, has been prophesied in the Jewish Hebrew scriptures. Through Yeshua ben Yehotzadak, who is the namesake of the Moshiach, this Yeshua ben Yehotzadak, this high priest, this Kohen Gadol, who made the Kippura, who rebuilt the Beis Hamikdash in 516 BCE, that ended the Golis exile of abandonment from God, Isaiah 54, 7, an exile that lasted 70 years from 586 BCE to 516 BCE. This namesake, Yeshua ben Yehotzadak, carries the name, the saving name, because Moshiach ben Dovet is to be the Kohen after the order of Melchizedek, Psalm 110, verse 4, who in his abandonment, Psalm 22, 1, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What did he do? He made the Kippurah. 
it says in Isaiah chapter 53 that after Hashem sees the travail of his nephesh, he will be satisfied. Yes, there will be an Hashem guilt offering that will come out of this. And regardless of what you say about it, friend, it says my righteous servant will justify many. If you want to be justified, you can try to justify yourself by doing mitzvahs and having your own merit from doing them. But you'd be much better off to let Moshiach ben Dovid justify you. Because... Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And our exile from God will end. And we will have reconciliation. We will come back. We will be like the, the prodigal returning to the father. And our exile of sin and death will come to an end. And, oh, God, I pray that this Yiddish Tanakh that we're working on will have a footnote for all 365 Messianic prophecies. And that somehow what I've just said will not get twisted or upstaged or minimized. And that, yes, it will be seen and read all over the world digitally on apps Bible apps on iPhones and Android devices of all kinds that, oh God, we pray that faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God and that you will keep us, Lord, holy and true so that we will be clean vessels fit for the master's use because to whom much is given, much is required. We cannot drop the ball here. We must pick up this ball and run across the finishing line. And oh God, we cannot do this in our own strength. And I want to pray for all the people all over the world who are helping us in the Netherlands, in New Zealand, in Australia, in Los Angeles, in Miami, in Oxford, England, in Thailand, in different countries, the Netherlands. Oh God, all these developers and and these uh, translation consultants and all these scholars who is sufficient for these things lord help us to sanctify ourselves and if you feel like i do tonight friend you know that you're a sinner who needs salvation and you need to be covered rob shawol said that he wanted his nakedness to be covered and that yes when we leave this world we we leave our our body but our renewed soul and spirit gets a resurrection body and it will be like the one he modeled for the 12 and for the 500 in the galilee and for all the others a body that not did not see shahat, a body that was spiritual, a body for eternity, a resurrection body. And oh God, we thank you for our salvation. And we know that paradise was lost, that there was an expulsion from Gan Eden. And we know that you clothed mankind and blood was necessary to put those skins, those clothing skins on them. But you want to clothe us with the robes of the righteousness of Moshiach ben Dovid. Not our own righteousness, but a righteousness that comes from God. And the it says the Shemesh Tzedakah will rise with healing in his wings. And that's what we're looking for tonight, Lord. We're looking for healing. Healing. The branch from the oyster has visited us. 
And now we look for the Shemesh Sedakah and the healing that's in his wings to rise upon us and take us to glory. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And when we get to this wonderful book called Malachi and we read it over and over and over again, we get to the to this verse. It's only about four or five verses from the end. Shemesh Tzedakah, the son of righteousness. Hallelujah. And then it talks about healing in his wings. And Lord, we need healing. We have been afflicted. There was a curse, a generational curse, down through the generations to the second, third, and fourth generation. And we need healing from it, Lord. By his stripes, we were healed. And we look to that verse in Isaiah 53, and we look at this verse. And we ask you, Lord, for healing from polycystic kidney disease, from all kinds of genetic diseases. We ask you to heal us from sexual aberrations and all kinds of, of family uh, uh, family curses and generational curses. Oh, God, we ask you to deliver us by the blood, the blood of the lamb that gets us out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of captivity, and out of the curse of Egypt. None of these, none of these diseases, none of these diseases will fall upon us because you will deliver us by the blood of the lamb. We look to the lamb's blood on the doorposts and the lintels of our house that we could cross that threshold unto life, that the angel of death will skip us and that we can skip through the, the wilderness and across the Jordan and across, across the Red Sea and across the wilderness and across the Jordan and all the way to the Eastern gate of the new Jerusalem in glory. Hallelujah. When Donald McGavern was getting ready to die, he wrote me a letter. And he said, Phil, and he had helped me so much. When he first met me, I had just gotten saved. I was pretty rough material, but I was already in the seminary and I was his student, even though I wasn't even in his area of the seminary. He just took me under his wing and then he mentored me and he edited my books. And he was there at the Pesach with 200 Jews, he and his assistant, uh, observing what was going on, seeing a revival among the Jews, something that had been looked forward to for hundreds of years. And here he was, a missiologist, a, a, growth, a congregation growth specialist, and a sociologist, and a scholar, and an evangelist. And here he was seeing the Jews come in. And so he invited me to his house. And there I was looking at this, this, uh, all these trophies, all these African things that he had from the mission field. And then I went to Miami and he wrote me letters. And, and this man lived to be into his 90s. But then he got cancer and he started to die. And he wrote me a letter before he passed away. And he sent this letter, not just to me, but to hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people like me that he had mentored and corresponded with and taught in the class. And he said to me, well, Phil, I'll see you. I'll see you by the Eastern date. I'll be looking for you.
And I pray, dear God, I pray that somebody will hear this. I get serious with God. Because the Eastern Gate is there. The question is, will you be there? Oh, God, bring us to salvation tonight. Bring us to contrition and repentance. Yeshua, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Take control of my life. And help me, Lord. Oh, God. And I'll give you all the praise for the blood of the Lamb that saves me and washes me clean. And his robes of righteousness that cover my nakedness and all my iniquity. In Yeshua's name, amen.